Hi, I'm Brooke Cormier. I'm a full-time artist, but guess what? I also like to garden. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking you on a little updated terrace garden tour now that the summer is basically over. I hope you enjoy. Just a heads up, this video is sponsored, but more on that later. This is sort of a sequel to my last video where I show the entire process of turning my little fire escape terrace situation into an urban oasis. So if you haven't watched that, feel free to pause this video and come on right back. I'll be here, but you can also watch them out of order. It's like a Star Wars movie. Same production quality too. Before I start the tour, I'll say that this year I'm giving my garden a solid 7 out of 10. And the biggest reason for that is the color scheme. Last year I went a little bit overboard with the colors, and so this year I was like, okay. I'm only gonna stick to two colors, purple and white, and we'll keep it classic, we'll keep it simple. And as it turns out, I am much more of a maximalist than I thought. I need color stimulation. Big time. So before making this video, I made some adjustments. It is now the beginning of September and my white Costco petunias are looking a little bit ratty. It could have been from underwatering while I was away for a couple weeks this summer, but I think another contributor was the infestation of these little aphids. Luckily, they only seem to be interested in the petunias and not the other plants. I've come to realize I don't even like petunias that much. They're great because they flower like crazy, and for someone who actually likes deadheading, they're perfect, but they're just sticky, and the bees don't seem to be interested in them, and when it comes to form, they just don't do much for me. So the fact that they weren't looking so hot gave me an excuse to rip them out and plant something else. Now that it's fall, it's garden mum season. Mums are great because they bloom for up to eight weeks, so I can still enjoy them for another couple months here in Toronto. I originally only bought two of these gorgeous orange mums, but after planting those, my green thumbs started twitching and, well, Like I said, I needed more color in the garden. So with that little alteration, I think we can officially start the end of summer garden tour. Hooray, yay! Hello and welcome back to my garden. Okay, let's talk new additions, starting with the garden mums. I think the garden mums took my garden from a 7 out of 10 to an 8 out of 10. Nice little splash of color. The only reason why I think it's not a 10 out of 10 is this 
area over here, which I just find to be a little busy and a little too green. The foliage from the ivy and the coleus are clashing a little bit, so I think I'm gonna replace these guys with something else next year. <laughs> but the bees love the coleus. They're just all over this all the time, so that's a bonus. Another addition to the garden since the last tour is this lovely bird bath which I got off of Amazon. I'm very happy about this purchase. Unfortunately I have not gotten any footage of the birds actually using it. I do have footage of squirrels drinking from it. Not what I wanted. I did not want to attract the squirrels with this addition. It's just an unfortunate outcome. Unfortunately, the bird bath is plastic, but what I do like about it is that this plate can come out and it's easy to clean, and I've weighed it down with some rocks in here. It kind of looks nice that way. Why don't you zoom in on the rocks, cameraman? Oh yeah, get that shot. Splish, splash, splish. That water is dirty. Ew, okay. <laughs> but I do change the water. I do change the water pretty frequently because I can't have my birdies bathing in dirty water. Another very exciting addition to the garden is a hose. As you know, before I was watering my garden with this giant watering can, taking multiple trips to and from the bathtub, this was something that a lot of people told me in the comments. Why don't you just get a hose that attaches to your kitchen sink? You big idiot. Guess what? I got one and it has been... The hose has made watering so much easier and it is truly a blessing. Thank you, hose. Before making this video, I asked my Instagram followers if they had any burning questions for me regarding the garden. And I had many people ask about the squirrel situation. I have had a constant battle going on with the squirrels in my garden. They are the bane of my existence, and it is troubling. <laughs> I did get a lot of comments on my last YouTube video with some great tips on how to keep the squirrels out of the garden. I wrote them down on my notepad to share with you guys. Tree bark, Irish spring soap, playing rock music, putting small rocks or gravel over the soil, motion detector fake owl, pellet gun, let me just say that the squirrels actually haven't been that bad this year. It's just been in the past couple weeks that I have noticed they are beginning to get a lot more active. They're just digging away. I think maybe because winter is coming and they're just like trying to find food, trying to store food. I have noticed though, they leave holes and they don't leave anything in the holes. What's with that? At least leave me a present or something. Rude! But overall, I would say that the squirrel situation this year, 
Okay, I am happy to say that I have not cried <laughs> yet. Username 996317 asks about the purple pesto. And let me just show you how that went. Another question from underscore personal underscore alchemy underscore asks, are you harvesting anything for the winter? And that is a good question. The answer is no, solely because, let me just show you the herb section of the garden as of right now. It's, uh, it's slim pickings. I'm happy to say that we did use a lot of the herbs during the summer season. We picked the cilantro clean. The mint and parsley and basil, we have all been just picking away at. So that's good. Another question from py.right. Favorite flower in the garden? Well, folks, she's right here. This is called Mona Lavender. First time I've ever planted it in the garden. I hadn't even heard of it until this year. It's not even lavender. They call it that because of the color of the blooms. And look at her. She is flourishing. Truly a spectacle. And I heard that you can actually overwinter it. So you bring it inside and it should survive the winter season. Unfortunately, my apartment is too small for that. <laughs> So I'm gonna try bringing it to my parents' house and I'm gonna cut off a little branch and try propagating it and then maybe plant the propagation next growing season. So nice, so nice. Another question I was asked in the YouTube comments of my last gardening video was how much all of this cost? And that's a very good question. And before I answer that question, let me just say, I don't have a lot of vices, you know? I'm pretty frugal with my money. I don't go out much, I don't, you know, have takeout all that often, I don't go shopping, you know, so... I like to spend my money on things like... plants. <laughs> $307.60, and I will throw the cost breakdown of that up on the screen, right here. But I'm hoping that my costs will be lower next year because I am using more perennials in the garden now, including Creeping Jenny, which I have reused from last year, and also this beautiful ivy, which I will also use again next year. Look, bee. Hello. Ah. Being a self-employed artist and working from home, I am fortunate enough to spend a lot of my time out here. And speaking of being self-employed, here's a quick word from Sponsor Brooke. I started painting full-time in 2016, and during that first year, I needed to grow my art business as quickly as possible to prove to myself and my parents that this was a viable career path. How did I do this? By selling my artwork online with the help of the sponsor of today's video, Shopify. Shopify helps you start, grow, and manage a business by offering an easy to use all-in-one commerce platform for anyone, regardless of technical ability and experience, which I had none of. Before I started using Shopify, purchasing my artwork was not an easy task. It involved a lot of back and forth between me and the customer. Answering inquiries, collecting mailing addresses, figuring out payment options. Once I was able to automate all that stuff using Shopify, it was honestly a game changer. 
It offered the path of least resistance for my customers, it saved me a ton of time and energy, and it helped me sell more paintings and prints. And here I am, six years later, still using Shopify to help manage and continuously grow my art business. So if you are a budding entrepreneur looking to start your own business, I would highly recommend getting started with Shopify. And you can do so by clicking the link in the description below for your free trial. Thank you so much Shopify for for supporting my art business and sponsoring this video. Now back to the tour. As I mentioned before, I spend a lot of time out here and apart from actually caring for the garden, here are some of my favorite things to do. Considering this terrace is like 15 square meters. Wait, is it 15? Did, yeah. Is that what we said? Yeah. Okay. I think that this video is long enough, so I'm gonna wrap things up now. Thank you so much for joining me on my end of summer urban oasis terrace garden tour. If you liked the video, consider smashing that subscribe button. I would love that <laughs> and I would love to see you again and we can hang and it'll be fun. Turn on the notification bells. <laughs> Bell. <laughs> There's only one. <laughs> There's only one of them. Turn it on though. This is gonna be my last gardening video for a while. I, I gotta get back to the art making so stay tuned for that and I look forward to bringing you a whole new garden design next year. Okay, ready? Uh. Oh, the bunny's back. <laughs> I love bunnies. Brooke Cormier. No, that was weird. I'm Brooke Cormier and I'll see you next time. That was a good snap, eh? Okay, that wasn't.